plants play a number of important roles in any terrestrial ecosystem. Pigments in leaves capture energy from the sun. This energy is combined with carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and water from the soil to make sugar through the process of photosynthesis. Elements such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are also taken up from the soil and made into different nutrients that are found in the plant tissues. Because they harvest energy from the sun and synthesize soil nutrients into useful forms, plants are called producers. Herbivores, animals who eat the plants, take the energy and nutrients in plant bodies and incorporate it into their own when they eat the plants. Likewise, carnivores, the animals that eat the herbivores, will eat them and incorporate the energy and nutrients that started with the plants into their bodies. Decomposers will eventually access the nutrients and some of the energy in the waste and dead parts of producers, herbivores, and carnivores. Materials are broken down into simple molecules that plants can take up again. The energy, however, is eventually returned to the environment as heat. This feeding relationship among organisms is called a food web. The action of herbivores does present a bit of a problem for plants. While small amounts of herbivory may be tolerable, Larger amounts of herbivory, with greater numbers of herbivores, can potentially be a serious issue for the plant. Herbivory causes the plant to lose resources, previously fixed energy, and that can lead to reduced growth and reproduction. If the level of herbivory is severe enough, it can even lead to death of the plant. So the question we have to ask is how can plants protect themselves, and what defenses do they have against the constant threats that they face from herbivores? The answer to that question starts with recognizing that not all herbivores are the same. For example, insects have a variety of mouth parts that can attack different ways. Grasshoppers and beetles have chewing mandibles that can bite into leaves and stems. However, aphids have stylets that can pierce the plant's skin and drink its sap. Mammals are another major group of herbivores. Their large range of sizes and diversity of tearing and grinding teeth make them a serious threat for herbivory to many plant species. And of course, there are many other animals that implement a wide array of strategies for herbivory. Consequently, plants have evolved two general categories of defenses against herbivores. One is mechanical defenses. The second is chemical defenses. Mechanical defenses basically involve making the plant tougher, harder to eat. This can be done by thickening structures or making them stronger due to depositing reinforcements such as lignin inside of cell walls. Other plants can thicken an outer waxy layer called the cuticle that makes it difficult for smaller herbivores to bite through and get into the leaf. Of course, the masters of mechanical defenses are cacti. Their bodies are covered with highly modified leaves called spines, as well as other smaller, more painful prickles called glockids. Plants typically use modifications of hairs all over their body as a very effective defense against herbivory. Let's now take a look at the second group of defenses that plants use against herbivory. One of the amazing things about plants is that they're capable of synthesizing an astounding number of different chemical compounds as part of their normal metabolism. These chemical compounds are called phytochemicals or secondary metabolites, because they're not directly involved in growth or reproduction. There are three categories of metabolites plants use. First are the nitrogen-containing compounds. Second are terpenoids. The final group of chemicals are phenolics. Each of these have their own unique characteristics and effects on herbivores. First are the nitrogen-containing compounds. There are several different types of chemicals in this group, such as the alkaloids, a particularly effective group that has a range of effects of the nervous system. Examples of alkaloids include caffeine in coffee, or morphine that comes from the opium poppy. Cyanogenic glycosides, such as amygdalin found in the seeds and fruits of the rose family, are another group of chemicals that lie inactive in the plant cell until an herbivore attacks and they are released and brought into action. Glucosinolates, such as sinagrin found in horseradish and many mustards, also affect the digestive tract but have a particularly strong effect on scent and taste. Next are the terpenoids. This is an extremely diverse group of chemicals that are also known as isoprenoids because they're all derivatives of a 5-carbon isoprene unit. They can be modified into a number of different chemicals through addition of different side groups and other modifications. Excellent examples are the many volatile oils that are produced by plants in the mint family. 
These volatile oils give the characteristic scent and flavor to plants such as mint, thyme, and oregano. Another example of a terpenoid is digitalin. It's produced by the common garden plant foxglove. It and similar chemicals can have an effect on an herbivore's cardiac system. Limonene is an aromatic terpenoid found in the rinds of many different citrus fruits. Pine trees produce resins that are a rich syrup full of terpenoids and different modifications of these chemicals. Likewise, the sap from rubber trees contains a sticky latex that is not only toxic, but like pine resin provides a sticky gummy mechanical defense as well. These examples also provide a good reminder that while these chemicals are to deter herbivores, humans can find some very good uses for them. Last, but definitely not least, are the phenolics. These aromatic compounds contain a six carbon ring attached to and arranged with a variety of different chemical structures. Many have antimicrobial properties, which can be important defenses against plant pathogens. Others, such as the tannins and more complex flavonoids, have strong bitter flavors that can disrupt the function of many digestive enzymes. Examples of these are found in places such as the leaves and fruits of oaks and walnuts. Other phenolics are synthesized into lignin, that's the primary constituent of wood. This makes plant tissues harder to chew and digest, another example of the relationship between chemical and mechanical defenses. Likewise, limonin is a crystal that's found in grapefruit rinds that gives it a very strong bitter flavor. Phenolics can also be used for allelopathy, which doesn't protect against herbivores, but can prevent the germination of seeds from other species, yet another type of defense for plants. So to summarize, as producers, plants are the fundamental source of energy and nutrition in an ecosystem food web. While this is necessary for the ecosystem to function, plants must defend themselves against herbivory to keep it from having lethal consequences not just for the plants, but to the entire ecosystem. Now, because herbivores differ in the ways they can attack and eat plants, they must employ a number of different adaptations that have evolved as strategies to defend against herbivory. These defenses fall into two big categories, mechanical and chemical defenses, although there's definitely overlap between them.